Good afternoon and welcome. Uh, Tim Ward is my name. I'm the sales director for uh, Australia for, uh, for Dubba. Uh, I'll introduce the rest of the team uh, shortly. But first of all, I'd just like to, to welcome everyone to this webinar um, and to formally introduce our, our summer sizzle, sizzler campaign, um, which kicked off, I think most of you would have received an email uh, late, late last week. First of all, uh, I want to say a big thank you to, uh, to you all for joining the call today and for participating in this incentive. We've got quite a few people on the call, which is great. Uh, really good to, uh, to see the enthusiasm for, uh, for this. And uh, you know, it's, it's, um, you know, we're really excited about this promo because we are, we're a channel-centric organisation. We, we rely on working with the likes of you. So anything we can do to help energise and excite our partners is, uh, is great for us. Uh, quickly, by way of hygiene, um, you know, if there's anything that you want to ask during this um, during this session, um, we will be answering questions at the end. But if there are any uh, quick things you're wanting to have clarified during the call, there's a, a Q and A section on the right of the uh, the screen. You should see there, and we'll endeavour to answer questions as, uh, as as we go through. By way of agenda, uh, there are only a couple of key things that uh, we're wanting to cover off today. Uh, appreciate everyone's busy. Um, but you know, really want to just, uh, I guess, focus in on a couple of key areas that help you get deals registered, uh, and then as a result of that, get cash generated for you. Um, firstly, I'll just do a little bit of a, an introduction um, to the Dubber team. Uh, I'll then walk through some of the, the key details for the promotion. I'll then hand over to, uh, to Theo Tedder, who will uh, give a, a bit of an overview on how to turbocharge deals with Dubber. Uh, and then if there are any questions at the end, we'll, uh, we'll run through, uh, through those there. So if there are any questions during the course of the session, as I said, please, please register those on the, uh, on the sidebar. Uh, introduction, um, the scene, the team, the dream. Um, yeah, as far as the scene is concerned, as, as you know, Dubber acquired Call-In uh, last year, and now we're all part of the one Dubber family. So you might have seen reference to, to Call-In or Dubber, we're all part of the Dubber family. Uh, as far as this um, promotion is concerned, it's for opportunities generated through Dubber or generated through, through, through Call-In, but all under the, the umbrella of the, the Dubber family. Uh, and in that context, you know, we have a, have a portfolio of, of uh, call recording AI solutions that will meet pretty much any telephony environment, be that on-premise, be that cloud, be that you know, MS Teams, Tippet, Liberate, um, or uh, other platforms as, uh, as well, including all you know, a myriad of, uh, of PABXs. So for us, you know, we think we've got a compelling, uh, I guess, program to run that, that sits across most of the, the telephony platforms that you're selling on a, on a day in, day out basis. As far as the team is concerned, uh, I mentioned, um, you know, uh, joining me to present will be uh, Theo Tedder, who's the sales VP for, uh, for APAC. Um, also on the line with us, uh, Jim Walsh, who is the Account Director for uh, Victoria, South Australia, Tasmania and WA, and Simon Ewan, who's the Account Director for uh, Queensland, New South Wales and, uh, and Northern Territory. You hopefully would have seen emails coming uh, to you from Jim and Simon, and they're crucial to, to this part of pro the, this um, promo and the engagement with them on this promo, as, uh, as you'll see shortly. Onto the dream. Um, yeah, as I mentioned, we're we're all about the channel. Um, we want to ensure that you know our partners have Dubber at front of mind. Um, you understand the value that Dubber brings uh, to customers, uh, and are comfortable presenting Dubber to your to your customers. So yeah, you know, I mentioned Theo will cover a lot of this in uh, in the section he goes through. But it's really important for us that our partners have Dubber front of mind. Uh, not to forget, this is also a great opportunity for, uh, for partners to, uh, to make some money as well. Um, and not to forget, I guess, that you know, not only is, you know, we, we've got the opportunity to generate, um, um, I guess, a revenue um, up front in terms of the, um, sort of generate cash up front, there's also where these do, opportunities do close. We've also got the opportunity to, um, to generate you know, ongoing revenue for, uh, for the dealerships as well. So there's sales that, uh, opportunities that go from just the, the lead status through to the sale, there's you know, the, the added incentive for, uh, for the ongoing commissions with that, with that as well, which is great. Um, moving on, just to give you a bit of a, you know, how, how it does work. So hopefully um, from the email, we'd have got some information on, uh, on, the, on the two ways that you can earn. So there's you know, $10 per endpoint will pay for opportunities registered up until the 31st of March. Um, and then $15 per endpoint for opportunities that close by the 31st of March. 
So one's uh, just for um, registration of uh, a qualified opportunity, and the other one is for those opportunities that, uh, that, that do close. As I mentioned, this is in addition to the revenue that you would get, the commission you would get from, from closing that, uh, that sale. Um, very easy to take part, um, three steps. Um, identifying a prospective call in or dubber customer. So this could be looking back into the customer base of someone who you've sold a you know, compatible telephony platform to previously, or deal you're working on at the moment, or recently closed, uh, or something that you know, you're, you're targeting into, into the future as, uh, as well as, as your discussions go. To register that opportunity via the, the Dubber website, there's a link down the, the bottom there, uh, dubber.net summer sizzler. Uh, and then schedule a demo with uh, with Dubber, so that's with uh, Simon or, or Jim by the by the 31st of March. So that's easy. That's it. Identify the customer, register the opportunity, get a demo, and that's it. That's all uh, all we need from you. And then, as I mentioned, there's ten dollars um, per endpoint is the minimum that will be uh, will be payable there. Just in terms of that website, um, there's a little bit of information that's required there. Um, just as we walk through there, there's just the information on the, uh, the opportunity that we know, just to give us information in terms of when we are having conversations with the customer as well. So what the status of that opportunity is, live prospecting, uh, et cetera, your details of, of the reseller and the opportunity de details. I emphasize here, please make sure that the correct state is, 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 is included here because what we're doing, we've automated the process to make sure that that then gets sent to the to either Jim or Simon based on, um, on where that customer, the state they're in. So that making sure the correct state for the opportunity is, uh, is included there as well. A couple of key promotional terms we just wanted to cover off just so that it was all um, clear on that. Um, it must be registered via the website, as we've just spoken about, so the, the Summer Sizzler web, website, um, only applicable to net new leads. So if there's existing opportunities, existing customers, uh, other promotions, upgrades, et cetera, they're not included within the uh, in this promotion, only net new leads. Um, Simon, Jim, the account directors um, that look after both the northern and southern regions must be engaged with the end customer um, to validate that, that lead. Um, there's a minimum of 10 eligible endpoints per customer is a requirement. Uh, and we'll be paying a maximum of $2,000 per lead, $5,000 per person, $10,000 per, per dealership. So there's quite a, um, a, a healthy opportunity to you know, if get a couple of big sizable leads in to you know, generate $5,000 in cash just for the, for the lead referral program. Um, the, the rewards will be paid to the dealer principal in, uh, in, in cash and to, and to accounts. Um, and where, where there is a closed opportunity, uh, as per the fifteen dollars, you know, the customer obviously has to agree to double or call in general terms and conditions as part of the sale. Full uh, a full list of the terms and conditions, uh, including this information, there are available on the um, on the double website in the, the Summer Sizzler page. You'll see that all all down the bottom with uh, the data there. All right, that's my section. I'm just going to hand over to. Um, to Theo, who will take us through the turbocharging um, deals, sales with Dubber. Awesome. Great. Thanks very much, Tim. That was really good. Um, so, bear with me, I'm just going to try and share my screen here. So, everyone can see that, okay? Excellent. Um, there's, there's a bit of a static there, so can I ask um, if anyone's on, not on mute, they can kind of put themselves on mute if that's okay. It's a bit of a talk back. Uh, and as lovely as my voice is, hearing it twice isn't great. Um, so look, um, just in terms of this section, um, so, uh, so Tim, thanks for, thanks for coming and covering that off. And, and we are really, really keen to, to make sure that this promotion works really well. And also, um, it's actually a, a bit of an opportunity to kind of, you know, refresh um, after the kind of the Christmas and New Year brains have been dusted off and actually look at, you know, some of the stuff around, you know, why Bubba should be compelling to, to, to partners, but also obviously equally, if not more importantly, to end customers. And therefore, what I wanted to kind of, kind of share within the next sort of 10, 15 minutes is just kind of, you know, two or three things that are hopefully interlinked. Um, and then obviously we can have a Q&A towards the end. But ultimately, you know, the three things we're going to cover off in the next 10, 15 minutes are really around um, generic buyer motivation. So why do people buy? And especially, obviously, why do they buy from Dubber? Um, some question types that kind of talk to those buyer motivations 
and then we'll also kind of wrap it up with a, a bit more around the the uniqueness of the double value prop so how you can articulate that if you're in a competitive situation whether it's in a core recording or whether it's in an ai and core recording environment and how we can kind of support you in that kind of environment where you're competing with with other systems etc so we're going to start with the the buyer um, motivations and, and really a bit of context setting so if you think about the world we're living in today um there's a really broad kind of um trend where you know that people are recognizing that the majority of the interactions that we have so whether it's through a uc platform like teams or whether it's through a mobile connected device that the majority if not all of those um, interactions are voice and that they're lost the moment the conversation ends and there's a whole rich sort of data that never gets captured in the business um, and you're kind of reliant on the will and the insight and the energy of the person who's chaired that call or you know interacted with a customer to capture it in a CRM or write briefing notes or update the general manager or whatever the kind of the, the escalation point from the call is, but it's pretty much lost in terms of the interaction and the insights that come from it. And the second thing, which is, you know, a pretty broad theme is that, you know, legacy call recording definitely has its, its, um, its place in the market, but what it won't do is give you the scale that you need going forward. So, you know, as businesses build out complexity, as they build a, a working from home kind of hybrid model, legacy core recording solutions are going to struggle just because of the way they've been architected. So again, not that they don't have a place in the market, but they just probably don't have a place in the market that we're talking about here. And when you think about the, the broadness of those kind of, you know, key trends, what that kind of then articulates to, to us is a really a challenge. You know, so certain sectors we know are under quite a lot of intense pressure from a regulatory perspective. So anything to do with financial sector, we're seeing it more in, in kind of crucial conversations, which, you know, for us would be things like legal, um, be medical, it'd certainly be wagering and stuff like that. Um, anywhere where there's a, a conversation and there is a degree of transparency that is expected, but also a regulatory authority sitting on top of it, um, there's just a really strong challenge to make sure that you're being compliant, but you're compliant across your business, not just into, into one or two silos. So that's definitely um, percolated to the top in the last 12 months. Um, Clearly, given um, and those of you who are Victoria experiencing lockdown 47 um, with me today, then you'll know that um, working from home and this hybrid model um, often isn't a choice. It's actually a, a reality. And therefore, this complexity around working from home, the remoteness, how do you actually both support your, your staff around making sure that they, you know, they're coping and, and they're doing a good job with their customers, but equally, how do you actually know from a, from a commercial perspective what's going on in the business? This complexity around working from home it makes the the ability to actually have calls recorded across the business again much more challenging but also more compelling from a double perspective and lastly um because this is the new the new way of working you know and, and there's a lot of advantages to hybrid um in terms of being able to work from home but also hopefully through to an office environment going forward there will be that demand and there is the demand for productivity and efficiency so um just because it's new um doesn't mean that old pressure of actually having to do things um, more intelligently, more elegantly, faster, um, and with better outcomes won't exist. And therefore, we know that that challenge also sits within within the majority of the partners we talk to, but also the customers that we serve. So they're kind of things that are we're aware of, but also quite helpful when we think about giving a bit more urgency to these conversations, especially within a campaign construct. So. When we talk about the answer, um, I, I, I want to spend a little bit of time on this on this last bit on the slide here before we get into into the into the crux of the sales piece. But when you think about the answer, um, the first simple, simple message is turn on conversation. Yeah, just turn it on. It is scalable. You're not getting penalised for frequency. You're not getting penalised for storage. There's no um, reason why you wouldn't turn on every conversation. That's different to the second point, which is actually now that you've got it turned on. You don't have to consume everything today. There is an ability which comes out of the box, which allows you, Mr. End customer, to actually use all this data that you're collecting and use it with a, um, a precision tool that allows you to apply some AI to do some insights, some immediate notifications, some to drive some reasonably sophisticated, but equally um, reasonably easy to understand automation within your business. So you've got this ability to have what we call conversational AI use, which is around what's going on in my business. But then also at the same time, you're aggregating big data over a period of time. And that's, you know, six, 12, 18 months when you can start looking at, well, actually all this stuff that's going on in my business, how do I use it strategically? How do I use it to shape my recruitment? How do I use it to shape my customer messaging? 
all that stuff can come over time, but you can only do that if you turn on the conversations across the board now. And as I said, the second point is you don't have to use everything on the first day. There is tools within the, within the product suite that allow you to raise productivity, be quite clever in the way that you drive your business outcomes and actually use the AI just to be quite, quite um, uh, intelligent in the way that you're kind of getting the business outcomes that you're, that you're expecting within your own organization. And then obviously from a, um, a financial and regulatory perspective, a lot of the demand around regulatory requirements is, you know, it's kind of threefold. It's around know your customer, understand what they're doing, understand what the resolution resolution is, and how do you report that you resolved it? And therefore, part of that process is, you know, clearly know your customer. And one of the ways you can do that really well is by making sure that you captured their conversation, that you've understood what the requirement is, that you can get set up an alert or a notification that allows you to get, get on top of it quickly but then also allows you to build out those, those kind of um, processes and workflows that enable you to resolve it. So again, really important part of the market. And then once we get into that world, what you're really talking about here is now you're into that journey of actually understanding the power of what's there and you're beginning to unlock the value of that voice data, which is clearly where we want all our customers to be and especially all our partners feeling enabled that they can tell that, but also get supported from Dubber in terms of be able to demo that or articulate it or help with RFPs. So that's the kind of the, the vision of where we want to be with you guys in the next kind of 12, 12 months or so. Um, let's talk briefly about bio motivations because there's, there's a secondary slide which probably gives this a bit more context. Um, so we, we think about this a lot in terms of um, the uniqueness of core recording and AI versus the general applicability of, you know, you can kind of fix problems everywhere. And therefore, how do you kind of, um, have some honesty in terms of what you're going after, but also how do you use it to support segmentation and, and actually start building out business plans and go to market activity. And, and I guess the, the easiest way for us to articulate it is across these four areas. So typically when we're kind of working with, with end customers, but more often with partners is what are we looking to do? And really what we're seeing is that customers who, who buy Dubber and our, and our voice AI and our, and our kind of core recording solutions, including the call in product set, they're looking to either solve a problem, they're looking to either improve a process or, or, or an outcome, they're looking to save money, um, or they're looking to increase uh, margin or sales. They tend to be the four primary motivations about why people are buying a solution. And it may apply to the majority of, of, of um, technology plays out there, but certainly when we look at that from a, from a double perspective, those tend to be the primary motivations that we're engaged with. And therefore, when we look at that from a, well, what does that mean for a, for a partner and, and for an end customer? The first one is, you know, the obvious one is around, they've got compliance challenges. Yeah, so they need to satisfy data and privacy regulations. They've got hybrid working from home. They've got part-time stuff. They've got a little mini contact center. They've got mobile workers. You know, they've got everything. They've got customer success people in the field. They've got pre-sales, they've got engineers, blah, blah, blah. And they've just got a whole raft of different workflows, different conversations and different multi-touch points going to their customer base. And therefore we need to be able to solve that. And we need to be solving it in a consistent and uniform way. And we do that through this concept of unified core recording, which allows them to access 100% of their voice data for compliance alerting. And then those rapid in investigations, which basically is around notifications saying, Tim shouldn't have said that on the call this morning. He mentioned the word Dubber, he mentioned the word ASX, and I'm not gonna say whether he said buy or sell, but he shouldn't have mentioned that on the um, call. And therefore it's been alerted and we're going to get remediated pretty quickly. And therefore you're solving a particular compliance challenge, which should be really easy to, to close from a, from a customer perspective. Um, conversely, improving business outcomes is a little bit more nebulous. Um, so what you're looking there is really around things like, for example, how do you understand your customer better? How do I improve a business process or a business flow? And how do I actually use the data that's available to me to actually integrate that into my business and actually improve business outcomes? And we've got a little bit more on the next slide around how we actually qualify that into an opportunity. The saving piece, again, a bit like solving compliance problems, the saving piece is pretty transparent in terms of how to position it. You know, we are the only um, unified core recording solution that is native to all those primary um, routes to market. So whether it's Telstra, Cisco, Microsoft Teams, um, we also have legacy solutions with some of the broad cloud and broad work solutions for those of you who know the Cisco ecosystem well. Um, and obviously, you know, we're, we're very closely aligned to both Microsoft Teams in terms of the ability to call record um, and provide voice AI solutions there, but also um, both the Telstra in terms of the Dubber solution, but also, as I said, the, um, the call-in solution that we acquired 
uh, I think it was what mid last year. So we are very much positioned to be a single partner of choice, both to our partner community, but also, um, as I said, equally importantly to our end customers. And the fact that we have the ability to scale means that we can kind of come in at a cost price point, which is pretty um, impossible to beat. And I mean that from a, a contact center or a legacy core recording perspective, we can reduce the cost and we can actually be an adjacent play where we actually just go over the top of a contact center and we're still cheaper, even if you include that plus all the other stuff we can do. So I would never see um, a cost conversation as being a barrier to closing a deal, I guess. Um, and then last but not least, um, the ability to actually improve. Yeah, so sorry, to increase. So we know that when we're talking to a business owner or a sales manager or someone who's got um, a p &L responsibility, one of the things that they want to know is actually what's going on in their business, how do they increase the customer satisfaction, and therefore how do they both increase their, their margins, their revenue, but also the reassurance they have around a customer renewal. And therefore, and anyone who's kind of you know had to own a, a sales territory or a number will know it's much easier to renew a happy existing customer than try and find five new customers to get up to the same revenue line. And therefore, when you look at the, the power of the voice data, what's available within it and the enriched data you can get from the voice AI, getting onto a customer who's a little bit disgruntled, getting onto them quickly and early um, and resolving that and then staying that six months longer or that 12 months longer generates such a significant revenue impact in the customer base that you kind of pay for the double solution by retaining one, you know, one reasonably well-paying customer for six months more, you kind of paid for the double solution for the next three years. So the ROI on keeping customers happy, getting that intelligence from the marketplace, whether it's through your customer success team, your sales team, your pre-sales team, or whoever's talking to your customer base, that's kind of gold dust. And therefore, you know, for us, again, a really strong ROI, linear, linear kind of connection between what am I spending and what am I getting? So um, <clears throat> just taking it a step back, um, obviously, as I said, compliance is always key um, in certain sectors. And obviously, compliance tends to be um, driven by um, average behavior in financial services, historically, um, and then obviously, a reasonably significant stick that um, they get hit on the head with when it comes to regulatory compliance and oversight. And therefore, you see those kind of, you know, key headlines, investment, mobile lending, financial advice, and contact center. Um, probably those middle two are the ones that are um, really strong opportunity sets where we're talking about everything from mortgage lending to financial advice through the superannuation to all of those kind of consumer led financial lending services, um, as well as obviously financial advice centers. They're everything from, you know, five, 10, 15 seats to being franchised operations and therefore their compliance burden is pretty significant, but also they're quite complex businesses and they run across multiple different um, silos, but also multiple different um, physical sites. And therefore the ability to capture that across a, a singular platform is really compelling. And then the other one I want to call out on this slide is, is, is on the, the right hand side where Again, we're seeing a lot of work and a lot of growth in um, the remote selling. So it says, you know, contact center and remote selling as a separate um, headline. If you think about any of your customer base that is selling big ticket um, deals or is looking for um, resolution of conversations with their customers where the value is quite high, then core recording and the AI solution that sits behind it should be um, front and center. And, and to give an example, um, we do really well um, globally, but also in Australia with uh, real estate, because um, obviously the value is high. We do really well with travel agents, because again, um, not so much with COVID, it's quite hard to fly, but you know, historically um, we've done really well with travel agents and we, and we did roll out a, um, a big um, rollout on WebEx calling to a large ASX um, listed uh, travel agent earlier this year. So definitely there's an opportunity there, but then also um, into automotive is another big one for the business globally. And the common theme there is the value of the deal is high. It's typically done quite often remotely in terms of the negotiation. And also you're actually having conversations around particulars of a deal or a contract side in terms of what you're supplying into the, to the client, but also in terms of what you're ordering. So you can think in terms of, you know, the stuff they're ordering, the parts and the kind of cycle of, of inventory, that's equally important to them as say, what a customer's asked for and what they've been quoted to get their, um, the road worthy done. So there's a lot of stuff there that kind of, you know, sits under this idea of remote selling. And the only thing I would say is that 
try and color that with a little bit of detail around the value of the um, the transaction that sits within that. Logistics is another one where again accuracy of data is important. So on to the questions piece. Um, so as I said earlier, the, the buyer motivations tend to sit really broadly around: Are you solving my problem? Can you improve an outcome for me? Can you save us some cash, or can you increase my margin or my or my revenue in business? And therefore, um, the big green tick is yes for all of those. But then, obviously, what we're trying to do is say, right, well, how do you open those conversations? So the idea being, you know, for example, the first two there are really around compliance, and therefore, if I look at the um, the bluntness the bluntness of the second question. Do you need to record course for compliance and conduct rapid audits and investigations? That's talking to two things. You need to be compliant, yeah, obviously. Um, and then the second one is how much time do you waste having to go back and listen to calls? Are you, are you kind of you know doing a legacy call search? Are you looking on, on, on putting a, a SQL string? If you go to the double platform, you can do any search you want on any kind of um, string and you'll get the answer within literally three seconds. And therefore, you got the scale, you got the compliance tick in terms of the privacy and the coverage, but also your user experience is really, really good in terms of how quickly you're getting the answers you need. Um, equally, when you're talking about improvement, so again, we're talking into the world now of actually, I need to understand what's going on in my business. I need to be able to um, understand when I've got a, a workflow or a, or a rogue agent who isn't behaving in a way that I want to. I actually want to understand why Tim is really good on his calls and Theo is awful. They kind of have the same, the same territory, the same job. Oh, I can see that Tim's calls are seven minutes on average and Theo's are three. I can see that Tim talks for two and a half minutes of his seven minutes, but Theo never stops talking. I'm now beginning to understand what's going on in the business and how I can improve both the outcomes at a kind of training level, but also at a process level where I can actually start seeing well, who's actually doing what and when are they doing it and then can I allocate you know, different people to a different area of the business. So again, it's all around that kind of competitive intelligence around understanding what's happening, especially when you have people working remotely. In terms of the saving, um, a saving question would be, you know, what would be the benefit of capturing all your calls versus a small number? Again, capture all of them. You don't have to use everything today, but with the AI stuff and, and the this concept of conversational AI, you can actually start getting some really meaningful notifications. But also you can start thinking about how you're gonna switch off that relatively narrow band of legacy call recording and how you actually start eliminating that cost from your business. But that also, you're starting to use that kind of, in a much more um, business outcome specific way than rather just having it in a narrow part of your business. And therefore, again, how do you then start using that to leverage value and insights across your customer base? And again, you can see some of the answers there. So this concept of UCR, so unified core recording, again, that whether you're a Teams customer, a direct to mobile customer, or whether you're using WebEx calling or whatever you're using as your, as your um, uh, connection play, all of it's captured in the cloud, all of it's captured under a single platform, and we can eliminate that cost in terms of having legacy service agreements, legacy service contracts, and it just basically un uh, um, gets rid of and removes those constraints, which typically are, are kind of characteristic of, of those legacy core recording solutions. And then lastly, the, the question around increasing. So how do you actually make my business better? How do I get more margin? How do I get achieve some more sales? So one of the questions you ask here is how do you like how can you understand what's going on in your business if you're not actually understanding the conversations? So as a chief exec, I'd love to know that you know I can pick up a, a dashboard on a, on a Tuesday morning at seven thirty and see all the calls that happened in my business yesterday, and I want to know you know of those nine hundred calls that eight hundred and sixty were positive, thirty were neutral, and ten were negative. And I want to be able to see that what the ten negative were about. A different requirement to say a customer success manager who wants to understand why the 30 calls that keep getting picked up every week are always under the same ticket ID and why they never get fixed, which is different again to a sales manager who wants to understand why Tim always closes his targets, but Theo never does. And therefore, the ability to start using the voice intelligence suddenly becomes quite profound in the way that you can actually use it out of the box, but you can also start getting quite clever in terms of providing different dashboards and different scenarios to different stakeholders within the customer base. So again, think about solving compliance problems, think about improving processes around how you're actually gonna fix problems and how you're actually gonna save money by moving to a more scalable hosted solution or cloud solution. And then equally, how you can actually start thinking about increasing margin and, and revenue within the business. And again, examples there that we can both show in terms of collateral, but also um, people like um, Jim, Simon, Shree on this call 
can also help in terms of demos, etc. So lots of good stuff there. Um, so if we if we kind of talk about where we got to in the session so far, we talked about you know buyer motivations around the four key areas of you know the, being able to save save even and, and and also improve. We also talk about the the key sectors where we'd like to play in terms of you know key financial regulatory environments, crucial conversations. We talked about the value of um, remote selling, where you're actually dealing with big ticket items, like so whether it's real estate or travel or automotive, or all, all those good ones. Logistics, again, because it's detail oriented, tends to be another one that we do well in. But then also the bit that we haven't really touched upon is if you're in a competitive situation, you understand any of this, they're just going, I just want to call recording. How do you articulate the value? And I think looking at a lot of these kind of um, items on screen, you can see um, some of them we touched around that's scalable and affordable. So they're, they're hopefully covered off reasonably well. There's, there's two I want to kind of finish on before we open up for, for a Q&A. Um, the second one there around deploying a click. Um, we know we're kind of, you know, scalable. We know that we've got the, um, the hearts and minds of our partner community. And we know that we kind of, you know, work well with our carrier community. So whether it's Telstra, Cisco, Optus, whoever. Um, what probably is less known is how quick we can be to deploy. Um, so literally, especially in a Microsoft Teams environment, you're talking 24 hours, as in someone comes in, they're on the right kind of uh, carriage plan, they can be tested from a, from a double perspective, and they can literally be switched on same day. Um, you will not get that kind of um, quickness of deployment anywhere else. And then if you kind of bolt on the fact that it's affordable, scalable, and you've got that UCR play where actually you can have it across multiple different platforms, it suddenly becomes quite unique. And therefore, you're not talking about core recording, you're talking about this unified core recording concept, you're talking about, you know, AI out of the box, but you're also talking about cost of ownership and how quick we can be deployed as in literally it's days, not weeks or, or months, it is it is hours that we can, that we can really win this business. Um, and the other one I wanted to spend a bit of time on is the last one there around integration. So again, security and compliance is very much um, in our in our strength and therefore, really comfortable talking about that. We talked a little bit about AI insights in terms of how you start driving some value, but really um, one of the things that we're seeing more and more of, and, and it's kind of um, probably influenced a little bit by um, kind of those app integrators and you know people like Twilio and people like that, um, is this concept of open APIs and fully productized APIs. And what we see is, you know, we brought out a Salesforce connector quite recently. So for those customers who have, for example, Microsoft Teams core recording, and they have Salesforce as their primary CRM, they can now just, you know, go into the Salesforce marketplace, spend whatever it is, I think it's 15 bucks, and they can capture all their calls and all their transcriptions directly within the CRM. So those small kind of additional items that kind of add value to the ecosystem suddenly make both the, the double value proposition really more valid, makes the customer more sticky in terms of their inability to get rid of it, but also adds value to our integration partners and our, and our channel partners where they can actually add some real value to their own end customers and start, you know, really driving business conversations as opposed to just IT and maintenance conversations. So it's definitely a shift we're seeing, but it's been primarily facilitated by this concept of open APIs and, and this kind of productization where you can really do some quite smart, but also quite easy to use integrations with different CRMs or different workflow processes. And again, we have a, um, a developer.dubber dot net um uh fully productized api area and for those of you who are kind of you know have that capability in your business would really encourage that you know you get your um your relevant teams across that so as i said lots of stuff there i'm not going to go through every single individual point but they were two that we hadn't really called out in today's session so that deployment piece we will beat the um the market in terms of the ability to deploy and as i said the fully productized apis are really strong um future narrative as we kind of you know go into that kind of world and our, our customers kind of expect it. So let me stop there. I feel like I haven't breathed for like the last 12, 15 minutes. Um, so I will breathe now and I'll open up for questions if that's okay. So first of all, um, any questions from the floor? Whilst we uh, we wait for that, Theo, um, I'll ask I'll ask a question on behalf of our partner community. There was a bit of information to absorb there. Is there a simple one pager that that we could distill that down to for uh, for customers, both the AI product and uh, the call recording? Product? 
there's probably um yes there's probably a one pager but also there's probably a one page on each if you if you like so there's probably one on the ucr concept and there's probably one on the um the whole voice ai stuff um so um obviously you can condense that into one page but to give it a reasonably good lick you'd probably want a slide on each um but it literally is a slide on it because you know it's not 30 slides and it's not you know going off and trying to find pdfs and understanding it, it is you know one slide on on the concept of unified core recording and one slide on the power of voice and data ai um so yes yeah, so we're really happy to share that and obviously we can share that across this community as well as obviously the wider the wider business community as well um and they tend to be well received because they're quite the reason we use which is the whole point so i saw a question come through from from day was it david um here from david here we are um what were the requirement to be able to set up Dubber on a legacy on-prem phone system? That's a lovely question, David. I'm going to hand that over to Tim. Yeah, sure. Um, thanks, David. It will depend on the on the telephony um, platform. So if it's a Cisco on-premise versus you know, another LG, uh, et cetera. But essentially what we have is um, using the, the call end deployment where we've got a thin client that runs on a Windows PC, whether that or a Windows instance, whether that be a physical PC or a virtual machine that secures, compresses, and then uploads the, the calls to uh, to the AWS cloud from there. So certainly have a solution that can cater for that legacy uh, on-site PABX. Just need a little bit more information to make sure that we've uh, you know tuned that for the for the applicable PBX. Excellent. Um, Shri, anything else to add to that from your side, from a pre-sales perspective, or has Tim covered it to a level that that's um, good for? Everyone? Yeah, uh, so just to add on to Tim's uh, conversation, so basically if there is a, uh, you know, request around signing or you know, bring up a you know, topic, basically we can leverage the call-in solution for that because, you know, if you don't want to send the proxy across the internet, yeah, call-in solution would be a great one because that's on-prem and it's secured uh, in terms of, uh, you know, data portability as well. And David, um... So I'm interested in as well, Theo, and, and something that not to overlook is is, is Dubber's uh, capability to record on the SIP trunk side. We're finding there's a an uptake from from customers and partners utilising the, uh, for example, the SIP Connect product um, and the ability to tap in on the trunk side. And, and, and for certain circumstances, it, it is a, an excellent solution as well. Yeah, no, very good, very good point. Thanks, Simon. Um, so yeah, absolutely, and I, and I think you know that's the whole SIP connect and, and the concept of you know typically it might be in a contact center. That that really does also round out that concept of unified core recording, as in you know whether it's mobile, UC, or into contact center, the ability to have that um, consumed across the different uh, anchor points within a business, but then also then consumed into a standard platform is one of the, one of the key differentiators, both in terms of consumption and also just around, you know, password security, um, user experience, the whole thing just becomes much more compelling rather than having four different core recording solutions, a bit of AI over here. Um, and you just get into a world where, you know, people, I think, you know, we're, we're uniquely presented and positioned to be able to kind of offer that kind of uniform experience. And then as I say, once you build in the, the data sets and the AI, AI stuff behind that, um, then you're into business business fixing and that becomes really valuable and you're moving away from carriage and now talking about content people like to pay for content because they feel they're getting better more rich data about their business so you know you're not no longer a utility you're actually a um a value add a proper value add within their business so uh, any other questions from anyone So I'll assume um, that I'll give people just a chance, last chance to think about any questions. I think, um, Tim, I might ask you to, to wrap up if that's okay. But um, before I hand over to you, Tim, I think um, we're really, really excited to get this campaign up and running. Um, I do appreciate everyone's attendance, certainly um, uh, taking time out on your lunchtime on a, um, I think it's very much appreciated. And I think you know, there's loads of um, upside, both in terms of the deals that we're hoping to see, and obviously the cash will pay. But I think you know, this is something that we can kind of scale on an ongoing basis. And, and you know, I'm hoping that we'll be doing another one um, April, May, um, depending on obviously the success. But we're really kind of behind all of you in terms of making this one in particular work as we kind of move through February and March. So I'll, I'll um, stop there and I'll um, hand over to, to Tim to wrap up if that's okay. Yeah, sure. Thanks. Thanks, Leo. 
Um, and thank, uh, again, thanks everyone for uh, for attending. Um, as you know, per the email, as per what I've mentioned as well, um, please you'll you'll have find Simon and Jim will be reaching out to you if they have not done already. Um, you've got the ability, um, the information there on how to uh, register opportunities on the on the double website. Based on that, you know, the Simon or Jim will be in contact. So I think you know that combined with the information Theo has just provided. We've got some simple documentation that you can provide to customers as well. Hopefully now you're all armed with the ability to, to go forth and conquer and, uh, and make some money. Thanks for everyone for joining. Thanks, guys. Thanks, everyone. Thanks. Thanks. Bye-bye.